Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to Tech Talk with Lucy, number 14. We've got two more to go after this, so uh, we're nearing the end. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about discovering collaborative PD opportunities, and I'm doing something a little bit different than I typically have done. I am using my iPad, and I'm mirroring it to Zoom. And hi, Ruby. Welcome. Um, so I'm using my iPad tonight to um, to show the slides on my computer, and I'm using my computer. It's a little confusing, but um, this way I can see questions and the chat and everything else a little bit better than um, than just using my computer by itself. So let's hope it works well. And here we go. So tonight we're going to talk about PD. Um, as you know, I am, hopefully, it's not turning the slide. There we go. That's me. I'm Lucy Gray. I am a former classroom teacher, technology coach, consultant, adjunct pr professor, and currently um, a ed tech director at a private school outside of Chicago. I am your personal tech coach for the next couple of weeks, and if you need to find me, here's my contact information. This uh, series is brought to you by Rio Salado College's Ed Rising program, and it's, anyone is welcome to attend or join our, our Google Classroom where the resources are posted. Um, any educators are welcome to participate in this. If you'd like to know more about this series, uh, you can go to this flyer at bit.ly slash Tech Talks with Lucy, and you'll see all the topics that we've covered so far and get more information in general. Here is the link to the slides if you want to jump into them tonight. I also will show you how to get into our Google Classroom. If you go to bit.ly slash techtalk14 slides, you should be able to access these slides as well. And you may see something that's new at the top of um, the slides tonight. It, you'll see a link that says uh, ask a question at Google Slides slash blah, blah, blah. That's a feature that's built into Google Slides, and when I hooked up my iPad, it asked me if I wanted to use it, and it's a little redundant to our chat, um, our Zoom group chat, so you don't necessarily need to use it, but I thought I would play around with it. What it does is it gives people a link um, within the slides to ask a question, and then I can see it on my iPad and, and potentially answer it, but it's really redundant to our, our Zoom group chat, so you don't need to stress out about that. Um, our Google Classroom information is coming. Uh, we're using uh, Google's uh, learning management system called Google Classroom, and you can find it at classroom.google.com. And you want to use a personal Gmail address probably to log into this community uh, because sometimes schools have uh, locked down the ability for people using um, their Google Apps for Education set up uh, to work outside of their domain. So, so you may want to use a personal Gmail address. When you get in there, you're going to click on the plus sign and enter the code. And this is the code if, if that text is too small for you. These slides seem to take a minute after I click on them. Come on. There we go. And here's the code that you enter in for Google Slides. So most of you have been here before, so you probably know how to get into Google Classroom and see all the links that I've provided for you in that Google Classroom. Um, but in case you don't know how to do it, you just receive the directions. Um, I've put in maybe 10 links tonight. Um, but typically, there's anywhere between 10 and 20 links that support the topic with each webinar. Also, within these slides, most things are clickable and will take you to the resource that I'm talking about. So that's why you might want to access the slides and click on the different slides to view the resources that I'm going to be talking about. Uh, this webinar is aligned to the International Society for Technology and Education or ISTE standards for educators, and these are the ones that we're covering tonight. We are helping teachers um, to be learners, leaders, and collaborators. 
And if you're not familiar with the ISTE standards for students, teachers, administrators, and other uh, educators, make sure that you check out their website because they have lots of um, great information about how you can help your students become 21st century learners. Uh, last week we covered uh, managing uh, your classroom, uh, particularly if you're in a digital learning environment, and we talked about some tools for, uh, for helping with this, like Class Dojo, but we also talked about some specific strategies for uh, working if you have a one-to-one -one classroom um, with mobile devices. So uh, it's all the resources are in our Google Classroom, and for the sake of brevity tonight, and since we only have two people here, me and Ruby, I'm going to skip chatting about this until the end of the webinar, and if you have any questions then uh, Ruby, we can share then. But I want to make sure I get through all the material that I have for you tonight, um, and we'll save Q&A for the end. So uh, this slide got a little mangled here. We're going to be talking about collaborative PD opportunities. And I wanted to start out, um, oh good, Ruby has a question. Um, Ruby, let's, let's table that to the end and I'll be, happy, um, I'll be happy to address it. Let me get through the PD stuff and then we can chit chat um, at the end. So um, here are the tips for um, professional development. I think people like Ruby and some of the regular participants who've come to these webinars have really enjoyed this regular time where we've gotten together to talk about different topics that are important to educators. And this is not the only resource that's out there. There are lots of organizations and people who are, um, who are supporting informal professional learning opportunities for educators. And most of these things are free. Most of these are done because teachers are, or organizations are really passionate about professional development and teachers. And so I want to point you to some kind of unusual sources um, for, for continuing professional development. The first thing is, um, the, my first tip for you is take control of your professional development destiny. Uh, don't wait for your district to provide the kind of PD that you really are looking for. Um, a lot of districts are really strapped for cash and for time in terms of providing really high quality professional development. And if you're unfortunately not in a district that really values this, you need to think about how you can continually learn um, as an adult learner and figure out how to do it. Uh, if we want our students to be lifelong learners, then I think we need to be too. And, um, and you can do it on your own time when it's convenient uh, using some of the resources I'm going to show you in a little bit. Um, one form of PD is, um, is reading blogs of other teachers and who do interesting things. And sometimes you can use tools to help um, aggregate these blogs in one place so that you can just browse through resources. One of them is an app called Flipboard, which I think is also web-based. Um, and I don't think I have it on my iPad. Let me see if I have it on my iPad. I don't think I do, but maybe we'll get lucky and see if it's here. Um, and you can customize Flipboard to, um, this is what it looks like. Maybe I can install it. Um, I'm going to install it and see if it will pop up. But you can customize Flipboard to be kind of like a digital magazine with topics and things that are of interest to you. So if you are interested in, kind of keeping up with things, you may want to try that app and website out. The other one that I use quite a bit is Feedly, and this is kind of a super nerdy thing to do. Um, and there's an app for it, and it's also web-based. Um, and I don't know if I'm logged in here, so that's why it's probably showing you something different. But let me see, I'm gonna log in, log in with Google, continue. Log in with my Google account, and let's see if it brings up my Feedly. So um, what Feedly does is I, I put links in or um, to blogs that I read on a regular basis. And actually, I have a lot in here because I was using this as a way to curate stuff for some social media clients um, during the past year or so. and. It is an app and it's a website. I pay for some premium for features, but it's usually free. And I have things organized into different kinds of topics. 
So um, I have an ed tech topic and you'll see, you know, here are the individual posts from, from a particular blog that I subscribe to. Um, and I can kind of scroll through this and um, look at different blogs that I find interesting. And I can read it, I can share it, I can look at the website a little bit more in depth. And this is how, this is how I kind of keep up. Sorry, I'm going a little fast here and it may be lagging. Um, but this is what I do. I, I look at, I identify some really high quality teachers who uh, regularly post good content and I take a look at their stuff every once in a while. So this is Feedly and they let you, you can also search for things. So if you're looking for, um, I don't know, um, let's try Arizona teachers and see what happens. Um, you can just search for Arizona and find local news sources too. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So this, I can search in my Feedly, I can look for news alerts on Google. Um, I can search Arizona teachers for more sources or articles. Oh, that's not, I didn't pick a topic that's gonna be relevant. Let me try something. Um, how about mathematics? Let's see what happens. Um, mathematics education, okay, that pops up. So when I search for keywords like that, it suggests blogs and tells you how many people are reading that blog and then you can subscribe to it. Um, so here's one that looks kind of interesting. I'm gonna tap on here and add it to my education category. And now I will get updates every time this person posts another blog post. So this is probably the first thing I did when I first started getting involved with EdTech was I started reading the work of other people who are documenting their learning by blogging in different um, places. So that's one resource. And then the other one for continuing professional development that I think you might find useful is Flipboard, and I don't. I haven't used this in a long time, so we'll, we'll see if this works. Um, let's see if I can do it through my Facebook app. And there it is. So it looks very simple. Um, it looks very similar to Flipboard and it's, it's very visual and you can flip through different topics um, and articles that may be of interest to you. So um, I can click on here and, um, and see what kinds of articles might be of interest to me. So it's a, it's a really visually interesting format. Um, so this might be one resource that you might want to think about. So Flipboard and Feedly are two that you might want to consider. Um, let's see if these slides update. You should be looking at my tips. Um, hang on. There we go. Um, so back to my tips. So um, take control of your PD destiny. Start reading blogs of other teachers when you have time. Uh, use your mobile device for it, your tablet or your phone, uh, and experiment with some of the different forms I'm going to show you, and um, see if you find a community where you connect with people, because that makes a big difference when you find people that you like um, and who become your online friends <clears throat> who are participating in whatever activity you're doing. So um, that's another tip. And then if you are a member of uh, a teacher's union, or I know Arizona doesn't have those, I don't think, um, or you're a member of the National Teachers of Math, uh, Council of Teachers of Math, or you know any kind of professional organization like that, they often offer professional development opportunities that are free. So check and see what webinars and that sort of thing that they're hosting. So let's dive into some of the cool things that are out there. Um, <clears throat> I may have shown this before. This is my friend Karen Blumberg's PD calendar, and she uses Google Calendar um, she's based in New York City, so a lot of this is kind of New York-centric. And 
she, let's see if it will open up for me. Oops, I don't want to, I want to go to the actual link. I guess I can't. Um, I will make sure that I, oh, here, open link, here it is. So what she has done here is she's used Google Calendar, um, it's in a blog post here, to um, note any kind of upcoming professional development events. And this is actually not a great view. Let me see if I can click on the main view of it. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, can I go back? Done. Um, let me try this one more time. So here's our calendar, and I know there's a way here it is. Click it in full page view. This is better. Okay, so what she's done, and I'll let that pop up there, is she's put an event in for every professional development and event she can think of, particularly around New York City. And I think this is absolutely brilliant um, because, uh, you know, it wouldn't it be great if, if teachers in all over the country were doing this and sharing it publicly so people could find out about opportunities that were in person um, or virtual, uh, you know, having a kind of a central calendar, you know, driven by somebody in your school district or, or school would be really useful. And Ruby, yes, that's a really good point. Museums and zoos also do a lot of professional development too. So make sure you check in with cultural institutions around you because they often offer free in-person, if not online stuff as well. Um, so yes, that's an excellent idea, Ruby. Uh, anyway, so here's Karen's calendar, and you can see that, you know, she's posted these different events in here for, like, months. Um, and you can look at it in different views. This is the week view. This is the month view. Oh, sorry, I'm going a little fast here. Um, and this is the agenda view. And when you click on an event and you want to add it to your own Google Calendar, there's a link that says copy to my calendar, and you can copy it to your very own Google Calendar. So um, I think this is a brilliant way to promote events to teachers and it would be great if more teachers were doing that for their individual districts or, <clears throat> or for, um, I don't know who, you know, somebody who wants to do it out of the generosity of their um, heart. So Karen stuff, you may find some stuff there that's, that's national, that's online too, that's not New York specific. So take a look at Karen's work as well. The other uh, resource I wanted to point to, and I think I've talked about them before, is a, is a ed tech company called Participate, and they have a great Twitter chat client. And we've talked a little bit about Twitter chats, and I'll go into them later on. Um, where, and you can curate resources from this Twitter chat tool that they have. They also have a community around um, collaborative PD, and they have, a, I think, a weekly chat talking about how you can lead PD in interesting ways and it actually met tonight the first one for the school year started tonight um, but you can join their community and connect with other people who are interested in professional development and there are other communities like this on the participate plan um, platform it's all free um, very enthusiastic people um, are part of this community so if you're looking for your tribe um, of professional development um, aficionados you might find it in this group uh, this is another resource that I've probably referred to before. This is Classroom 2.0 Live, and it's run by a couple people, including <clears throat> Peggy George, who lives in the Phoenix area. She's a former principal and one of the most professionally generous people I know. And they do this every Saturday in Blackboard Collaborate, which is similar to Zoom. And I think it's at noon my time, so it's probably 10 a.m. Arizona time. Um, and it's a free webinar featuring a teacher who's doing interesting things in a classroom. So the next show is this Saturday, August 18th, featuring Sharon Davison, who's a kindergarten teacher who does a lot of global projects with her students. Um, so you can tune in and catch it live and ask questions, just like in this webinar, or you can watch the recording, which is housed in iTunes U and other places. Uh, really, really great show. They have a whole live binder. This is a tool that you can use for curation, full of resources mentioned in each of these webinars that they do. So huge treasure trove of, resource, of, of information, and it's completely free. Another place where you can find community and resources and webinars is EdWeb. And um, they're free webinars on a variety of topics. 
and they are on a weekly schedule and there's usually a small community wrapped around this where you can ask questions before and after the webinars. They also give continuing education certificates. So if you need that kind of documentation for your school, they provide that. So there's tons of topics that you can, um, you can, you can browse their directory and see if there is a particular community that appeals to you. I know that their librarian community is particularly strong. So you may want to um, check it out. And it looks like we've got another person joining tonight. And that is uh, Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Welcome. I'm going to mute you just because I'm in the middle of the webinar and um, you can unmute if you have a question. Okay. Um, so here is, um, so that's Ed Webb and it's all completely free. Again, if you go into my slides and I'll show the link again to the slides at the end uh, and you click on the word Ed Webb here, it will take you to their, um, to their site. So this is what Ed Webb looks like. I haven't logged into this in a while, um, but they have tons. Of, oh, they have a calendar here on the right hand side. It shows you upcoming webinars. So um, I'm going to zoom on this and hopefully there's a little bit of a lag here between my iPad and the slides and hopefully it will come up for you in a second. I'm going to see what's going on here. So, um, Jenny, for, since you just came in, I'm using my iPad to show slides and things from my um, iPad tonight, but I'm looking in, into my computer right now. I'm using two, um, two pieces of technology to do that. And what's interesting is that it's not catching up. What I'm supposed to be sharing on my iPad is not showing up on your screen. So I'm just, I guess I'm just gonna continue with the slides then. Anyway, check out EdWeb because I think you might find that um, to be useful. Um, uh, let's see if this next one comes up. The next one is EdmodoCon, which just finished. It's an online conference. Okay, so it looks like, I'm gonna stop sharing for two seconds. Um, nothing's catching up here. Can you guys see? As a screen that says Edmodocon, or does it still say EdWeb for you? Okay, there seems to be a little bit of a lag, so I'm going to stop sharing. And I'm going to share my screen again and go to iPhone, iPad, and share. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? Let's see. And then I am going to click on here. This was working really nicely. Hmm. Let me try one more time. Stop sharing, share screen. I'm gonna try it through my cable and see if that works a little bit better instead of through the other method. And that looks like it's working now. Yay, okay, that's better. Woohoo, okay, we're back to where we were. Okay, so Edmodocon is a virtual conference that takes place every August, um, and it features educators who are using the Edmodo platform in their classrooms, and they bring, and these teachers um, are flown to California to their headquarters, and then they do a live stream um, to people who've registered on the internet. And I watched the opening keynote. They had a, a, a gentleman named Andrea Schleicher from the OECD talking about trends around the world with education, and it was fascinating. And then they had a bunch of teacher presentations and then a closing keynote. I don't know if the recordings are up yet, but they will post them. If you, if you register, still you'll get a notification for when the recordings are available. Um, but they were all really good, the ones that I saw. So this is a virtual conference. There are more out there that I will talk about at the end because I forgot to add them to the slides. 
the other one, um, the other thing I want to talk about too was our um, podcasts. And these are not necessarily collaborative, but if you have a, these are, are, are ways to learn from other people, particularly when you're multitasking. Um, I just got a pair of uh, ear pod headphones, wireless um, headphones from the um, earbuds that go to my ear from Apple. And so I can be, you know, have my phone in my pocket, have podcasts um, on my phone, and listen to things while I'm walking somewhere or cleaning my house or cooking dinner. Um, so podcasts are a way that, you know, and also if you have a long commute to your school, you could um, listen to podcasts in your car and that sort of thing. So this one I thought was particularly interesting. This one is for PE teachers. And they're using a, a tool called Boxer, which is like a walkie-talkie app. And lots of teachers have formed Boxer groups around professional development topics, and that's one form of PD, of informal teacher-driven PD. But this is a podcast where this guy, Jorge uh, Rodriguez, is recording um, his podcast in Boxer, and then he uploads the audio files to iTunes here. And you can subscribe and to, the, to the episodes on your phone or your iPad or, um, or if you have iTunes on your PC, I guess you could too. Anything that has iTunes on it. And I can show you what that looks like in a minute. Um, but this one's focused on PE. And there's some other ones that I recommend too. This one is also from iTunes. This is uh, MindShift. It's one of my favorite blogs. And they also have a podcast. So you can see the different topics here, and you can get a single episode, or you can subscribe to the whole, um, the whole podcast. And it's kind of like a magazine subscription. When a new episode is available, it comes into your, uh, either into your computer or into your phone, whatever device that you're using to catch podcasts. I use the podcast app from Apple on, um, on my iPad, which looks like this purple. Um, but there's also, um, these are the ones that um, are, are recently are recently updated on my iPad. Um, and these are all the ones that I subscribe to, I think, under shows. And I don't, I, I don't watch all of these, or some of these are video, some of these are audio. Um, but when I have time, I will, um, like I love of pedagogy, uh, I will listen to one of these episodes when I'm maybe multitasking somehow. So you can get one episode or all of them. You, it, you can kind of manage these audio files on your device too. Once you've listened to them, you can delete them and that sort of thing. Um, podcasts are a, a way of, um, of uh, getting some professional development from experts. Now, on my Mac, I, I listen to them in iTunes, and I download them from iTunes. And I don't know if it's going to be the same um, on my iPad. It might be a little bit different. So this is the iTunes store, and probably under... I think I have to use the podcast app on my... On my um, on my iPad, but on my Mac, I use the iTunes application. So that's that. So podcasts, and here are a couple other ones that I really recommend. And if you click on the link that says MindShift Podcast, it will take you to the location in, um, in iTunes. It may, if you also go to um, the Cult of Pedagogy website, or the MindShift website, I'm sorry, it also may have their audio files uploaded to a different podcasting platform. Google Play has podcasts. Spotify has podcasts. I'll, I'll show you a list of some other ones in a minute. This is one that is, I've met this woman, and she's a friend of a friend, and I think she also does some courses in Facebook, too. She's, she's done some interesting work. I don't know very much about it, but apparently this is a very practical podcast and comes recommended, and I need to start listening to it. ASCD, which is a, a curriculum group, they have a weekly podcast too. Um, that's not necessarily a tech focus, it's more about teaching and learning and curriculum. 
And then here's, I was mentioning the cult of pedagogy. I love this woman's blog and I've just started listening to her podcast as well. Really high quality, practical stuff. So other places you can find podcasts and you can catch podcasts using a variety of tools, um, Google Play, Learn Out Loud, Spotify, SoundCloud. Um, and I just found Listen Notes tonight when I was looking for resources for you. And Listen Notes is a podcast search engine. So you can search for different topics and see what comes up. So that's another form of PD. Um, and then Voxer, I wanted to mention, you know, I talked about that guy who recorded his podcast using the app Voxer. Uh, this gentleman is Jerry Blumgarden, and he is a retired teacher who curates resources on everything you can think of for teachers. He's like a walking encyclopedia. And this is his Voxer page, so if you want to explore Voxer and how it works and how teachers are using it for professional development, um, here are some very specific links for it. I've used it at a conference um, that I worked at. It was our main kind of channel of communication. It was kind of like a group, a group text chat um, to share information. But you can also, um, I wonder if I have it on here, actually. Let's see if I have it on my iPad. That might be a good thing. Um, there it is. I, I think I do have it. We might be in luck. I haven't used this in a while. Um, nope, I don't have it. I'm going to download it. Uh, but this is the app, and it's also web-based, and you can also get the app for your phone on a variety of platforms. And so you can make a group. You can, you can have an audio chat with just one person, but you can also do it with a group, or you can use text as well. Um, they call it push-to-talk technology. And so people have organized themselves around topics related to education, and are sharing resources and chatting like this instead of using maybe Twitter for Twitter chat. So um, let's see if it, what it looks like on my iPad. I'll let it access my microphone and I'll log in. I have no idea if this will work because I haven't been in here in a long time. I like it when I can log in with um, Google rather than Facebook. But. Okay, so it looks like it worked. Okay. And here are some chats that, um, this is a group right here that I must belong to. And you can see that people have been sharing links and filling, you know, they're chatting about whatever it is. Here's somebody left a voice message where the arrow is. Um, and you, what you do is you, um, you, um, this person looks creepy. I'm going to block them. No idea who that is. Can I block that person? Well, I'm going to delete them. Um, whoops. Um, so I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to practice sending a note to myself. So you click on this and you allow your um, microphone to talk and it's recording you. Blah, 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 blah. And then we have a recording here. And I don't have the volume up on my iPad. Um, or you can put in a picture or a GIF and send it to somebody. Um, looks like you can put in the location. So it's kind of an interesting tool for using um, for different things. And I don't think I belong to any boxer groups. That, that are talking about professional development, except for, um, let's see, except for this Q Hootenanny one. This is a Q conference chat. Um, this is something that I have not used quite a bit. So this is this is the last time I really used it. Was this is the group I used at the Q conference, and we were talking about um, this game, this badging game that we set up. But there are groups out there that are talking about PD topics. So you may want to um, check that out at some point. And that Jerry Blumgarden page, I'll go back to that in a second. Um, this is where you'll find everything that you need to know about Voxer and how people are using it for professional development. Um, he also is, this is his page for Twitter chats. 
We mentioned Twitter chats before, and I'm going to show you what they look like. Um, this is a, a great way to, there's a list of, of tw Twitter chats on Jerry's page and also in Participate, which I mentioned earlier. And what you do is you search for um, the hashtag for, um, for something. I'm going to um, click on recent searches and put in um, so one that was mean tonight was, I need the hashtag, sorry, where is it? There it is. Um, collaborative PD. So I think their hashtag is this. There it is. And you can follow, you know, their conversation in Twitter and you can jump in here using that hashtag and add to the conversation. So their next chat is going to be, I guess they must do it once per month. They meet once per month on the third Wednesday from 8 to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So if you want to participate in this, it's just a really quick um, once a month uh, chat. And you can go back and you can see what kinds of resources people and comments that people shared. Typically, Twitter chats have, a, have questions. So Jennifer Williams is the moderator here. And her fourth question was, how many, how might educators other than share and propel new learning that has occurred during participation on advisory boards or fellowships? And so she uses that hashtag so that it's threaded. And then people respond to it. And this person responded to that tweet. So this is another form of professional development, um, kind of similar to the Voxer chats that you might be interested in. This is really interesting. If you're in a situation where you're providing PD, you might be interested in this, or you might want to do this on your own. This is a group in Michigan um, that does this for students and for teachers, and it's basically a self-guided uh, course on how to do things. Um, so they're talking about different concepts that are related to ed tech here. And they give you some different activities so that you can try things on your own and teach yourself. And I love this idea of 21 things. Um, there's also one for students and it's in the resources in a Google Classroom. This is getting a lot of pop becoming more and more popular. This is Apple Teacher. And when you click on this link and you, you create an Apple ID, there's a center with everything related to Apple products that you might use in education. Um, there's tutorials on how to use Apple's Clip um, um, app. There's you know, lots of different things in there, including, and let's see if I can, I don't know if I can find it. Let's see if I can do it on here. Um, I'm not logged in, but you go in here, sign in, Let's see if it puts me in here already. Um, if I can remember my ID. Oh good, it, it pulls me. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna do it for my new school. Okay, click on there. No, that's not my new password, but anyway, let's try it. Let's hope that's my right password. Yep, hello. 052361, I have to put in a code. You won't have to do this, it's because it's, it's, I'm signing out. Oh, come on. 05, whoops. 051352, was that it? This is annoying. 37, I'm going to write this down so I don't. And don't screw it up. Uh, three, seven, eight. This is not normal. This is because I'm, um, the way I have my devices set up, I have two-step verification in here. Most people do not have this, run into this issue. Why is it not doing this? Come on, you can do it. Okay. Lost. All right. I should be in here. So what this is, is if you're in a school that's using Apple things, this learning center will help you. There are announcements in here. 
Um, there are ways that you can collaborate with people and then you can earn badges for doing things um, related to either the Mac or the iPad. And so this will, there are eight activities and you click on one of these and there should be, um, there's an Apple iBook here with a starter guide and you read that, you look through that and then you take a short quiz to make sure that you have the skills that they're asking you to do. So this is, this is getting very popular. A lot of school districts are requiring other, other teachers to do this if they're in a Mac or iPad district. In my new school that I'm working at, um, we're asking teachers to do this by December to do either the Mac or the iPad track and um, we're gonna, you know, as, as a way of doing informal professional development. So that's Apple Teacher. And there we go. Google also has a similar center with things. Um, you can take exams and become a Google level one certified teacher. I have not done, I am a Google certified innovator, which is a higher level than that. Um, I've been one for years, so I didn't necessarily have to do those exams. I think you may have to pay for the exams. But and those are under certification. Um, but there's tons of resources in here if you want to learn more about Google, Google's um, tools, and you don't necessarily have to do their certification program. But if you're interested in that, you can. This is one of my favorite things. This is from some fellow Apple Distinguished Educators. This is a website about how to design professional development and different kinds of professional development that are formal and informal. And it's a group of Apple Distinguished Educators who maintain the site, and they've created iBooks, which are multi-touch books that you can use on an iPad. And I think they're in other formats, too, so you don't have to have an iPad. Um, and they're all free. So they're really, really cool ideas for making professional development interactive. And, and your professors might like that as well. Now, there's also, I wanted to show you something um, that I, I should have mentioned, which is my own thing. I run an online global education conference, which is like webinars around the clock um, during November, um, during International Education Week. Global Education Conference, let me just search for it, Global Ed Conference. It should come up right away. Um, there it is. And this is a network of 27,000 teachers. And um, we have various events that are going on during the year. Kind of blown up here, sorry. Um, and you can come here and you can sign in and you can get notifications when our conference starts and when our schedule is there. And we also um, post archives of the, of the videos from the sessions from previous years. So you can click on here and learn about these people and watch the, the, the archives of our keynotes and all of our regular presenters as well. So that's the Global Education Conference. And my partner in this also runs another one called Library 2.0. Library 2.0. And there's a whole community for this. And they do like mini conferences once, um, I don't know, once a quarter. And they're about to do a mini conference on Wednesday, October 17th on social crisis management and 21st century world. So if you're interested in what librarians are doing, this is a whole community of librarians and events that are, um, that are for that, that genre. So um, again, if you join this community, you'll get updates about these things through, the e through email and you can decide whether you want to join or not. Um, but I, I, should have, I should have brought those into um, my slides and I didn't. Um, let's stop for a minute and see if you have any questions. There was a question earlier from Ruby about, we were talking about classroom management last year and so for management, is there any good suggestions for lesson plans? And I don't know what you mean, Ruby, by that. Can you elaborate a little bit? Either in the text or, or unmute, your, unmute yourself and tell us what you mean about that. Hi, Ruby. I work, 
our new principal would like that we we have our like organized. You have what? Um, I would, um, my new oh, our new principal would like that we have our lesson plans uh, in the internet and organized. And I wish to know if uh, there is an app or a software that we can use for that. Yeah. So remember we talked about um, a couple of uh, weeks ago. Um, let's see if I can log in here and show you. Let me go into our Google Classroom. So this is Google Classroom on the iPad. And in our, in, do you have, Ruby, have you gotten in here to look at our resources? Because everything that we've talked about the last couple of weeks are in here. So, um, so here's, if you click on Tech Talks with Lucy. Oh, I'm clicking on the computer, not on my iPad. Um, everything that we've, and I, not all the recordings are up yet. I'm working on that. Um, okay, so here are the resources. You'll see the most recent ones posted for tonight. So for instance, I, um, here are the links that I put together on PD opportunities, remember, okay? I also um, have them for all the different topics that, oh, that's, those are different classes, hang on. Um, there should be a way to see all the different topics. Uh, if you're looking at this on a computer, all the topics are on the left-hand side. Here they are, okay, here are the topics. So I'm gonna filter according to topics and we had we had one on lesson planning. Remember on redesigning digital on, on redesign lessons for the digital age, and in the resources for this, and maybe you missed this one, Ruby. Maybe you weren't here for here. There's tons of resources for finding stuff for lessons. So these are more like lesson plan tools, um, but these were tools. This one for um, like a digital lesson plan book um, and different software that you can use to create your lessons. And, you know, I think, you know, I've done some work for Edmodo and I think it's a, a really good way to kind of organize your materials digitally if you're all digital all the time. So that's one that I would think about. Let me go back. Where was I uh, in Google Classroom? Um, this one's free. It's, and it's um, commoncurriculum.com, and it's a lesson planning tool. So you might want to try that out. I have not tried it out, but this is what it looks like. So that, is that what you're looking for, Ruby, this kind of thing? Okay. So just to review where it is, if you go into Google Classroom and you go to the category, it was, it was July 25th. Um, and the category is uh, redesigning. I like presenting off the iPad. This is fun. This works better for me than trying to deal with my computer exclusively. Um, where to go? There. Redesigning lessons for the digital age. This is where all the resources, the tools are that I that I researched and recommended for you. Okay, um, so there are a couple other ones that you can look at and see if, you know, I would, I would make accounts in all of these if they're free and then see which one felt the most useful to you um, and had the features that you wanted. A lot of these tools will have certain things free and then if you want to remove the ads or you want something premium, like, you know, for more classes or something, they charge. So be careful, you know, about that. Um, Edmodo has ads in it, and it's 100 bucks a year if you want the ad-free version. Um, but you can make as many assignments and classes and whatever you want in there, and I think it works really well. Um, but I don't know about these other tools in terms of their pricing, so you might want to look around there. Um, so Ginny and Ruby, any other questions you have for me tonight?
And I, do I finish on time? I, do I finish kind of close to time? Because usually I'm way over on time every night, every time I do this. So, yeah, we actually, I'm finishing a little bit earlier. Okay. Oh, so, Jenny, I'm glad you, or you're enjoying this and this, you find this useful. Um, um, we have two more sessions left, and they are, let me put the slides again. Um, your homework for next week, if you want to, is to try one of the activities I mentioned and report back next week what you found out. Um, we have two more sessions. And so uh, next week it's going to be about how to con conduct online research. And this is going to be more about um, search skills, like how do you search effectively to find things. And I'll give you some tidbits on that um, and some lessons that you can do with students to teach them to be effective searchers, which I think might be useful. And then we'll dig into, uh, into, um, into um, how, do you, how do you get kids to be good digital citizens. And I think this is really important. It's not a series of lessons that's going to help kids be um, digi good digital citizens. It's going to be um, a mindset that you cultivate in your classroom and in your school. So I'm kind of excited about my new school because they've really been really thoughtful and intentional with what they recommend for kids with um, becoming good digital citizens, and they work with parents on this, and it's, it's really kind of cool. I, I don't know um, what it's going to look like in practice, but the, the materials that they've put together are really good, and they're intentional about their, what they're trying to do, because um, we're living in a, in a day and age where kids are on technology all the time, and we still want them to read books and to play and to do other things. So it's really very much of a concern, um, I think, anywhere. And as a parent of a 15-year-old and a 19-year-old, you know, I worry about that a lot. Um, so anyway, we're going to talk about that topic in the next time. Um, and then, if you know, past this, you can always reach out to me. You can always find me on Twitter or in, on Gmail. I'd be happy to answer any questions for you. I'm not going away. Um, you know, unfortunately, I, I don't think the series has had a ton of attendees, but um, the teachers at Rio Salado will be able to use these webinars going on going forward if they want to um, for their classes and that sort of thing. So hopefully people will be using them after the fact. That's my hope. Um, let's see, what else, can I, what else can I share with you that's interesting around PD? Um, let's see, let's do a little bit more. Um, so here's, let me, let me go through some of the resources that I have for you here. Some of them are, I've already mentioned. Um, so, uh, da, 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 da. so here's some things about podcasts. They're not necessarily education related. Um, this one I thought you might want to look at. Uh, this is an EdSurge article from a teacher in Nebraska and how, um, in Nebraska, it's pretty rural where this where this particular teacher lives, and so they 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 don't have you know what living here in Chicago. There's a lot of PD. It's a you know big urban metropolis, right? I can go in in Phoenix. Probably you might have some opportunities too. I can go to things fairly readily. But what do you do when you live hours from other people? And this was part of a. Um, a 50 states project where Ed Surge tried to get an article in 2016 from every state about what was going on with Ed Tech. And this is a really kind of interesting one. So she's saying that they have, um, they have 286 school districts with 300,000 300, students um, spread out all over the state. And, you know, but they have, they're, you know, they're looking for quality professional development. So, it's also a very long stay if you haven't been there. So they do social chat platforms. You know, um, they use on Twitter, they use the hashtag NnebEdChat. So they do that every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. and people join in. Lots of states do this. There's probably an Arizona EdChat. If you, if, you, if you search for hashtag AZEdChat, um, you probably will find one for Arizona. Um, so that's one way that they're doing it. And then this particular teacher, she um, teaches at a Catholic school. So she participates in Twitter chats for Catholic Ed Chat. 
And so here's some other ones that she did. Then they've been doing um, ed camps, which are unconferences, and um, they'll do them in kind of you know major cities in in Nebraska so that people can get to them. And those are all they're teacher run. They're not. You don't have to. Um, you don't have to with an ed camp. You don't have to you know create a presentation ahead of time. It's it's. It's what happens at an ed camp is people get there. Um, people who are interested in a topic say, "I'm going to talk about." Or, you know, they might post it on a board or something, but they'll say, I, "I'm interested in, you know, talking about, uh, you know, working with special needs kids or whatever." And I'm going to go to room 101. And so, anybody who wants to talk about that topic is welcome to join me. So everybody who's interested in that will go to that room and. Other people will propose things. It's usually a little bit more structured than I'm talking about, but it's teacher generated right there, right that day. And it's not meant to be one person talking at people. It's meant to be a collaborative experience. And um, there's a foundation that supports this. It's gotten some money from the Gates Foundation. And this, it's a very organic, empowering model of professional development. So if you can ever go to an ed camp, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Um, and in Arizona, or in that Arizona, Nebraska, that's something that's been effective there for an informal thing. And, you know, you don't, you just need to be able to have, your school doesn't have to pay anything for it. Uh, they're usually free. I think they always are free, unless they might charge something for lunch. Um, but typically people try to get sponsors for lunch, so, that, so it still remains free. Uh, but there's no, you know, if you're, you know, you don't have to be an expert to, to host one of these. You just need a location. Um, that will you know to do that then this is the other one that they're doing um, you know this is before Twitter now has 240 characters so it's a little bit better but they're you know the one of the problems that, that this woman ran into was how do you have deeper conversations and um, they're using boxer so let's see what happens if we can click on there will it take us to boxer no it's just a put hashtag for ISTE so if you didn't go to the ISTE conference, there was a hashtag not at ISTE, and people shared materials over that. Um, but like, I wish I could find the Voxer. I wish there was a link to the Voxer chat so we could see what it looked like. But apparently there is, if you, use, if you search for this hashtag in Voxer, um, you might find their Voxer chat. So this is how you know one person in her state organized professional development to benefit people in her region, and I, you know, I think this is a brilliant idea. Um, Ruby, yeah, all the all these materials are going to be up forever. I, as long as my Google account is going, um, I'm not planning on getting rid of them. So you're more than welcome to uh, peruse all this stuff afterwards. I am um, going to try. I've been not. Been, I've not been good about putting the recordings in here, and I'm behind on it. I, I'm sorry. But I did upload a couple to YouTube tonight. Um, and I also have to re-record my YouTube presentation because remember that was the night that we had the weird guy that popped in? Um, I need to re-record that one. So uh, I probably will do that maybe next week. Okay, so here's my channel. Here's my playlists, and these are the ones that I've posted, and I still have a couple more. Like I know I put up last week's tonight, and I don't know where it went, so I have to redo it. Um, so I'm going to copy the link, and I'm going to go back to our Google Classroom, and I'm going to make an announcement. I'm going to put it in, um, I don't want to do it in all my Google Classrooms. Um, link to our recordings. Paste it in there, and then put it in that topic and save it. 
So um, if you guys want to go through any of the recordings too, you have it. And I will be adding more um, as I, some of them are, are, the files are on my desktop computer and I haven't transferred them up to YouTube yet. So uh, anyway, that's, all this stuff will be here for you. Um, and you can always, um, you know, I hope, there's also, by the way, there's also a new version of Google Classroom that should be out, and I don't know how we upgrade to it, but maybe it looks better than this one. Um, I don't know if you have to register for it or anything like that, but there is a new Google Classroom with features coming out if you, um, if you want to, if you want to use this yourself. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, and I don't know, I just don't know very much about it. I haven't tried it and I haven't figured out a way that I can change my stuff to it. Um, I, li I like Google Classroom. Um, it, it's easy, it's simple, it's not, um, you know, terribly complicated. What I don't like about it is it's not, uh, there's no ability to be social in it, really. Um, you can have discussions in here, but as you've seen, our, our community has been pretty quiet. Uh, I think, A, educators aren't used to chit-chatting on things like this, um, but also just the, the design of it doesn't lend itself to it. On Edmodo, just so that you can get a feel for what that looks like, um, it is a little bit more, um, It is a little bit, this doesn't look right to me. Um, I feel like I'm missing something here. Here are my classes. Um, either that I, this is how I, I use this with students. So this, I use this with a class I worked with a number of years ago. Um, and it's like Facebook for education. That's what, and, and we did a, um, you know, we had prompts in here and the kids, the kids responded to them. So we, we had an author talk with an, uh, an author named Grace Lynn who wrote a book called Where the, Where the Mountain Meets the Moon. And so we brainstormed um, questions that we might ask her and we did a lesson on what makes an effective question and things like that. So this is how kids can use this. And I, and I feel like Edmodo has a, a pretty simple view here. Um, you can see the teacher asking a question, and then the people respond. And this was actually, they, they, worked, with, um, they worked with another class here. Um, they were trying to have a collaboration with another class in Connecticut. And it was kind of fun. So, and then they also could do, they also drew pictures and you can post, you know, your drawings in here, take a picture with your tablet or whatever and post it up here too. So here's some examples of the student work. I forgot that they did this. <laughs> I have no idea what this mosaic was about and there seems to be, um, they're all kind of similar. Anyway, I think this is, this is, particularly if you're working with younger kids, I think, um, and Moto works pretty well, uh, and I think there's more there's more stuff to with Edmodo on the desktop version of this rather than the iPad version of it. Um, and the, and also by the way on their desktop version, uh, there are free courses in Edmodo from time to time from different partners. So if you wanted to take a course on like project based learning. University of Virginia has a free or very low cost course that you could take for credit. Um, so, you know, there are opportunities in this, an area called Spotlight, and Spotlight has courses in it and lessons and, you know, free stuff that you can put into your, your, your classes on Edmodo. All right, unless you have any other questions, um, I think we're done tonight, guys. Um, I'm actually, I can't believe I finished early. That's just not like me. Or maybe I'm looking, I'm looking, you know what? I'm not early. It's, oh, I'm over time. See, my iPad says 9.41 a.m. And I was looking at that as if it were um, 9.40 p.m. 
I also have to tell you a funny story. Um, if you were here last week, you might have heard my family being noisy in the background, and I couldn't figure out what was going on. I, I told them, I'm recording a webinar, please be quiet, and it was, it's 9 o'clock here, so they were, um, or it's going to be 10 o'clock here. Um, so they were really noisy for being kind of late at night. And what happened was my husband like makes like smoothies for, for breakfast in the morning the night before, and he, was, he uses beet juice, which he's the only person I know that drinks beet juice. The beet juice bottle exploded all over him, <laughs> and that's why they were being noisy. And um, he showed me pictures afterwards, and his whole shirt was covered. It looked like he was bleeding. And um, yeah, adventure. And then all the all the beet juice. I keep on calling it beetle juice. Um, hit the ceiling. So our white ceiling in our kitchen is now looks like it has a rash. <laughs> yeah, so I missed the whole thing because I was hanging out with you guys. Um, here. So um, it was really hilarious. I thought you guys would appreciate that. Anyway, um, I'm looking forward to seeing you next Wednesday. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or communicate in Google Classroom and I'd be happy to help you out in any way. Um, even though we're a small audience, um, you guys are small but mighty and I appreciate you coming. It's, it's always fun to chat with you. Have a good night.